Good morning, a happy Easter to all of you. It's such a joy to worship with you this morning. Even though we can't be the church together in one space, we are still the church dispersed. Our online presence will continue this Easter week. For my morning devotion, instead of the saint's calendar, I will be doing a a hymn of the day instead. So we'll be looking at some favorite Easter hymns. Also, keep looking for Ruth's Word of the Day, and there are lots of other things that get posted. Stay tuned for a video, a surprise video after the dismissal. So when I give you the dismissal, you are not dismissed, surprisingly. So there will be a surprise after the worship service. Our office hours this week will be 9 to noon, Tuesday through Thursday, The office is closed tomorrow. Remember to contact us if you need any assistance in in getting necessities. You can contact us at at that number, which should be on the screen now, 320-762-8641, or our email address, shalomlutheran at gctel.net. And finally, a big thank you to those who provided our Easter flowers for today, and I'm sure that our local florist is also grateful to you all. We'll take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship. Early in the morning, the women fled Jesus' tomb, their voices silenced by fear. But their voices would be heard, and all would know that Jesus is alive. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. This is the day that God has made. Raise Raise your voices and rejoice. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed.
hymns of praise, then let us sing. Ha, ha, ha. Christ our heavenly King, Hallelujah! Who endured the cross and grave, Hallelujah! Sinners to redeem and save, Hallelujah! But the pains which he endured, Alleluia. Our salvation have procured, Alleluia. Now above the sky he's king, Alleluia. Where the angels ever sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We confess our sins before God and one another. Risen Lord, we We see see the the miracle miracle of of your your resurrection. resurrection yet so often live as though we are still lost in our sins. We rely on our own feeble will. We stay mired in the past, and we refuse that which is too uncomfortable or unfamiliar. Forgive us and open our hearts again to your freedom. Amen. Praise God. Christ is risen. We have a new life, and the old has fallen away. Rejoice that we are truly forgiven, and go out and proclaim the grace that is free to all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, the news of your resurrection was shocking and surprising when it was first heard. May our joy at these glad tidings give voice to our witness and hope to our hearts. In the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture is from Psalm 118, verses 21 through 27. We will read it responsively. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. Praise him, all ye little children. God is love. God is love. 
praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Good morning to all of our wonderful and amazing kids out there. Thank you so much for joining us. Today is Easter Sunday, and we can't, we couldn't be more thrilled that we get to celebrate that with you uh, today. And so, just know that again, we are thinking about you, we are missing, we are loving, and we are praying for you each and every day. Um, so we're, today, we're going to talk about Easter, but we're really going to dive into a story called the Empty Tomb. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with the first light of the sun. The women didn't notice the sky. They hurried to the cave that contained Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, led the way. Two others, Salome and Joanna, carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Uh-oh. They had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening to the cave. How would they move it? The woman kept going to the cave anyway. As they came closer, the, woman could see, the women could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They peeked inside. Oh, it was dark in there. Brr. It was cold in there. Drip, drop. It was damp in there. What? It was empty in there. Jesus was gone. An angel appeared in sparkling white clothes. The glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. The women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus isn't here. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the disciples. The women did not delay. They ran to tell Jesus' friends what they had seen and heard. Whew. Mary bumped into a man, tripped, and fell at his feet. Wait! She knew those feet. A familiar hand reached out to help her. Wait! She knew that hand. She looked up, and yes, she knew that smile. It was Jesus! Hello, friends, Jesus said. Jesus really was alive! The women hugged his feet and shouted with joy. Go tell the others the good news that I am alive, Jesus said. I will meet them in Galilee. I can't wait to see them again. The women had a new job to do. They had to tell everyone Jesus was alive. And today he is with us, he is for us, and he loves each and every one of us. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. Praise Him, praise Him, all ye little children. God is love, God is love. On that Friday evening, the Son of God was dead. Buried in a borrowed tomb by an influential man, Joseph of Arimathea. As Joseph rolled the stone against the door of the tomb, the two Marys saw him buried. They saw him dead. Jesus didn't faint. He didn't seem to die. He was dead. All the expectations and hopes of the kingdom of God shattered that night as the tomb shut. But something unexplainable happened early Sunday morning. That Sabbath, that Saturday, must have been the heaviest Sabbath, the saddest Sabbath those women ever experienced. But something extraordinary happened early Sunday morning. The disciples must have felt broken. Peter especially must have been plagued with monstrous guilt over denying his friend and Lord three times. But something amazing happened early Sunday morning. What happened that Sunday morning turned the world upside down. As God decreated the old sinful order on Friday as the sun died, 
God put his seal on the new creation when he raised Christ from that tomb. Of course, no one could grasp that at the time. The women go to the tomb to anoint the body with spices, a task that may have been left until early Sunday. Remember, the Sabbath begins at sundown on Friday night, so such work could not have been completed that evening. So these faithful women, the only ones who watched Jesus suffer, die, and be buried, went early that morning to complete the burial rites. And what they saw was shocking. Their initial anxiety about the stone at the tomb must have transformed into apprehension when they saw that it was already rolled back. They were still brave enough to enter, but they found the tomb empty. Except for an enigmatic young man dressed in white. Mark tells us it was a young man who tells them that Jesus is no longer there. He is risen. He's going to Galilee where it all began. And the disciples and Peter need to be told. But in that moment, the women can't tell anyone. They're overwhelmed. They're shocked. They're terrified by what they see. The dead stay dead. People 2,000 years ago knew that just as much as we know it today. The empty tomb is too much for them to bear. So in an ironic twist in Mark's gospel, they don't say anything to anyone. Throughout Mark, Jesus commands people, after he does a healing, not to tell anyone, not to tell anyone about him. Here at the end of the gospel, the women are commanded to tell They're commanded to tell the disciples that Jesus is raised. And they cannot. This Alfred Hitchcock-style ending is likely how Mark ended his gospel. This is likely the original ending. To be sure, when you open your Bible, you'll find two more endings to Mark. You'll find a short ending and a long ending. But the textual evidence tells us that these endings were likely added by scribes who were dissatisfied by Mark's seemingly ambiguous ending. The tube remains empty, and Jesus does not appear after all. There's no appearance of the risen Lord in the original original ending of Mark's gospel. How can you have have a resurrection story that doesn't include an appearance of the risen Lord? All we seem to be left with is an empty tomb, terrified women, and still absent disciples. Doesn't make for a very joyful Easter, does it? But this kind of Easter described in Mark resonates with the Easter we're celebrating today. Our building is mostly empty this Sunday morning except for your worship leaders and your helpers in the sound booth, nobody's here. This is the most bizarre Easter I have ever celebrated. How about you? There's no joining together in this physical space to sing praise to the risen Lord. There's no scent of lilies. There's no communion. Not only is the building empty, there's a longing emptiness. There's a longing emptiness within me. There may be one within our, you as we stay sheltered at home. A longing emptiness to come back together. Such a time like this is a pregnant time. It's a time filled with both fear and hope. Just like that Sunday morning at the tomb. But hope overcame fear in those women 2,000 years ago. And God has planted within each of us that same hope in our empty time. How do we know? The fact that Mark wrote his gospel in the first place tells us that the women did tell the disciples. 
those brokenhearted and scattered disciples, those disciples who abandoned Jesus in his hour of need, were brought back together and told others. And those others told others, told others down to our present day, down to you and me. Even in times of paralyzing fear, God has provided preachers, lay and ordained alike. Preacher just meaning someone who proclaims the good news of Christ's life, death, and resurrection for the life of the world. God has provided preachers to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Empty building or full building, days of fear or days of joy. The good news continues to be proclaimed. Hope continues to be planted within the hearts of the faithful, within us. That hope for new life, for the fullness of God's kingdom is at the heart of what makes us church. That resurrection hope makes us church. Building or no building, you are still the church. I don't know if you've seen the local news lately. But God's Spirit is at work around here. The resurrected Christ is, is on the loose in Alexandria and in the world. God is still planting that resurrection hope in you and in others. You only need to read the stories about healthcare workers who place their lives on the line for others. You only need to hear about people who spend hours sewing masks or about the massive donations of food, money, or other supplies to those in need. You only need to know about our local congregations finding creative ways to bring God's word into the home. The resurrection hope that God has planted within us continues to motivate the faithful to embody the kingdom of God in whatever way they can. Something beyond our wildest hopes happened that Sunday morning. God planted the hope that never fails into the hearts of those women. And God continues to plant that hope in us. Jesus is alive. And when we feel our emptiest, our loneliest, our saddest, we know that God's promises are certain and sure. They were from God the Father to God the Son. They were from the young man to the women. They were from the women to the disciples, and so on and on, down through the centuries to you and to me. Though we may feel empty, as empty as an empty tomb, in Christ we are fulfilled. is the victory thou our death has won no more we doubt the glorious 
first prince of life. Life is not without thee, aid us in a strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory, the Lord's death has won. We confess the faith of the Church in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. church, the world, and all those in need. You give a voice to all your children, even when we are frightened into silence. Empower all those who work with people struggling to make themselves heard and to remember what their own voices sound like. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Blooming and growing things begin to greet us in this season of resurrection. May we see in them your eternal promise to renew all of creation according to your great vision of life. Risen Lord, hear Amen. our prayer. Like the impossibly heavy stone at Jesus' tomb, we often perceive great obstacles to what we are meant to do. Show us that you always provide a way and that joys beyond our imagining await us when we are faithful. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Your new life also gives us life, great creator. Bestow your healing spirit upon all those who need it this day, especially those affected by COVID-19. We pray for those who are ill and those who are taking care of them. We pray for those who are economically struggling and those who are providing leadership, counsel, and comfort. We also lift up Ray, Evie, Ray, Tom, Jim, Connie, Skip, Jody, Norm, Jenny, Mark, Phyllis, Kiera, Arlene, Lisa, Jerry, Jan, Sandra, Maury, Ron, Linda, David, the Silver family, and those we name before you now silently or aloud. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. 
All your saints in heaven and on earth join together to rejoice at your resurrection. Make us joyful in our communion with them and grateful that because of you, we also have a place in your eternal kingdom. We remember the witness and work of Shalom's congregation, council, and staff as they work for your kingdom. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. In sadness and in joy, you hear our prayers, O God. Hold in your hands all these things for which we ask, trusting in the mercy of the one who defeated death, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for continuing to support the mission and ministry of Shalom Lutheran Church. There are three ways that you can give. You may send your offering by mail, you may set up an automatic bank transfer, or you may download and use the Give Plus app on your phone. I am blown away by your continued support in this time. And again, thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us, who gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Let us pray. Risen Lord, as the, the women, women brought you spices, spices the, the best, best of what they had, so we too offer up these gifts for the work of your church. Bless them and use us as instruments of your good news, 
for the furthering of your gospel message. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. Thank the praise heaven and those dear charms, His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us. setting sun, His love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on, His love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong. go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. We believe God is calling us to invite people into a deeper relationship with Christ so that all may discover true peace and be prepared to follow him in compassionate service. Rejoicing in the resurrection, go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
God.